Hello, you're watching National Cuisine on Kazakh TV. Today we'll make Russian fritters. Our guest is a wonderful person, president of the Bikers Association of Kazakhstan, Dmitry Petruhin. The legendary Dmitry Petruhin is with us today. Hello, thank you for coming. Could you please tell our viewers about the dish that we're going to make? What nationality does it belong to? You have traveled 250 kilometers to 150 countries of the world. You must know the national food of every country you have visited. I have had to cook many different dishes, especially in Africa when I often had to make a meal from whatever ingredients I had at the time. I don't see any insects on the table. This is comforting. Well, as you may have already guessed from the way I look, I do enjoy good food, especially pancakes and fritters. Flour products, yes, fritters especially. I make them myself. They're very easy to make. Easy and quick. Yes, I like them well fried. Russian cuisine involves a lot of vegetables. For example, potatoes, carrots and various flour products, fritters and pancakes. Let's start. Here is kefir. Let's break the egg first. You might want to use a spoon because that is plastic. So, 250 kilometers. You've traveled around the Earth several times. Yes, I have. Along the equator? Yes, I traveled along the equator many times. Here is the salt. We'd better do it by hand. Do you prefer to do it by hand? I do. In order to feel out the right amount. And now we have to stir it. Next we'll add some kefir. We should probably pour the whole carton. Yes, that's probably right. I am famished, so I'll have some right now, for you and for me. It's probably best to put this away. All right, now we can add sugar. How much sugar? Do you have a sweet tooth? I do. In that case, we'll add more sugar. I don't recommend adding more than four spoons. All right then, even three spoons is enough. Very well. Here's the baking soda. Baking soda makes the fritters fluffy. Fluffy and delicious. Now about the equator. I've traveled 40,000 kilometers around the equator. And everyone asks me, how? How did you do it? You've traveled 250,000 kilometers. I'm very pleased to have traveled to all the southernmost, westernmost and easternmost points like Cape Horn and Alaska. Mm -hmm. This might be the reason why my mileage is so high. You have traveled to 150 countries. Which cuisine impressed you the most? I can tell you which cuisine impressed me the least. All right, let's start with the one that impressed you the least. I was least impressed with Indian cuisine. Why? What don't you like about Indian food? I like it a lot. But I do enjoy Korean and Chinese food very much. Pilmeni and vareniki are also popular Russian dishes. They're delicious. I can roll the dough and make vareniki myself. This must be stirred thoroughly. Can we add the flour now? Not yet. We haven't stirred it quite enough. 
So this is what we have at this point. Yes. What else do you like apart from Korean and Chinese cuisine? I was really impressed with Dominican cuisine. I think it's very similar to our food. Does it involve a lot of meat dishes? Yes, it is a little similar. But they cook everything separately. Kidneys, hearts, all of the animal organs are cooked separately. The variety is fascinating. You can select the ingredients that you like the most. An individual approach to each gourmet. In Russia, it is customary to make specific dishes for specific occasions. For example, pancakes are made for Maslenitsa. I have many relatives living in Russia. They celebrate holidays by baking pancakes, pilmeni, and many other dishes in the traditional Russian oven. In the fresh air, despite the cold, it is a wonderful tradition. Our dough is ready. The pan is heated. How much oil should we add? A little, just enough to cover the bottom of the pan. A little? I think this is enough. Let's wait for the oil to heat. In the meantime, let's talk about your travels. As far as I know, you have traveled to various continents. Have you been to all the continents? Have you been to the South Pole? The South Pole and the North Pole are problematic. The North Pole is basically a frozen ocean. Do you plan on traveling there? Of course I do. I have discussed it with the Russian National Geographic Society. We are very good friends. I represent Kazakhstan's Geographic Society. The North Pole and the South Pole are both extreme destinations. The traveler must be well prepared. It's very hard, no doubt about it. Can we start baking now? I think so. The oil has heated. I will travel to the Lazarevskoy station, which is located in the South Pole. That's where we will start our trip. We will travel 200 kilometers from the station to the South Pole. It will be, like you said, an extreme journey. The participants must be strong and healthy. And wear warm clothes, naturally. This well-fried one is mine. I love well-fried fritters. You like them well-fried? I do. Why? They have a special taste. My wife scolds me for eating well-fried fritters. She says they are bad for me. You know, many doctors say the same thing. Russian cuisine involves many flour products, like bread and karovai. Russia, karovai was baked to welcome home soldiers from the war. Greet the newlyweds at wedding parties and celebrate many other holidays. Dmitry Petruchin and I are making Russian fritters. These look good. We like to have fritters for breakfast. With jam, jam, and what else? 
I like them with strawberry or raspberry jam. Any kind of jam will do. Which dishes do you miss the most when you travel? Well, you know, Russian and Belarusian cuisines are easily available in many countries of the world. Of course, I love bishparmak, our favorite traditional Kazakh dish. I've never seen another dish like our bishparmak anywhere. I suggest we add a little more flour. You've decided to make the next batch of fritters special. The first batch was made by Igor, and this one will be Petruchin's batch. All right. That's what we'll call it from now on. Our fritters seem to resemble bow socks. Yes, they do. This is due to the baking soda. It has made them this fluffy. Go ahead now. You'll make the next batch yourself. And this is what I have made. I've traveled half the world and tasted many national cuisines. The traditional Kazakh food is still my favorite. I love it the most. Our culinary battle is coming to an end. We were cooking for two, but somehow ended up with enough food to feed the entire film crew. That's true. Can you tell us another interesting story about your travels? I have always wanted to taste raw meat, dance around the fire, and spend some time with the natives in their original, primitive world. When I was in Australia, I found an Aboriginal community, only to discover that they were, in fact, very modern people. They told me I was 50 years late. There's nothing exotic about them now, but they did put on a theatrical performance for me with actors and everything. I got to enjoy raw meat and dance around the fire. The only place where I encounter the world in its original form is Africa, Tanzania, Somalia, Lesotho, and Swaziland. You see, this is what fritters must look like. The fritters are done. But I would like to tell our viewers that it is not advisable to fry them to this condition. This is exactly how I like them. Delicious. They might be to you. It's a matter of taste. Half the fritters are well fried, and the other half is regular. I think if the crust has turned golden, the fritters are ready. You are right. Dmitry Petruchin's creation is ready. These are Russian fritters. Thank you for coming here today and sharing this recipe with us. Thank you for telling us these amazing stories about your travels. 
Good luck to you. Our guest is the president of the Bikers Association of Kazakhstan, Dmitry Petruchin. And now it's time to taste our dish. 